Welcome to Youth Open Shop Live. My name is Ryan. I'm here at the Ogden Bicycle Collective, and I'm here with Donna today. She's helping me get all this stuff going. Thank you, Donna. Uh, she's actually helped me virtually today, so that really helps out a lot. So today we're going to be going over a real special topic, safety gear. Do I need it? What is it? Where does it come from? Why, why do I, what is this? I'm only going around the block. Gosh, darn it, mom. Why do I, why am I always having to wear my helmet? Stuff like that. We're going to be answering those kind of questions today. And before I get into it, I just want to uh, welcome you guys. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit late today. We had some audio issues. We had some uh, just good times all around issues. So uh, fun fact, I had to, it all started today with a bit of a wardrobe malfunction because I'm in a beautiful park here in Sydney, Sydney, Australia. There's there's a building. I've never been to Sydney, so we can pretend right now. But for the green screen, I had this great idea. It's almost the Christmas season. It's almost it's the almost the end of the holiday season. I was gonna wear my holiday sweater. Only the holiday sweater was all green. So that was a little bit fun. So I don't know if you can see it. There's a T-Rex in a holiday sw sweater vest. And that, that's, that kicked off this whole fun series of events. So thanks for bearing with us, guys. Uh, this is a weekly live stream we do every Tuesday at 5. Ballpark. No, we try to do it at 5. So if you guys want to join in, you can watch the videos after the fact on YouTube. Those will just always be up there but we'll also be on Zoom every time we're here live. So that way, if you have any questions and you want to go ahead and join us, you can go to tiny.cc slash yos dash live. And that link is down in the description. So if you have any questions, go ahead and join us live. You can also follow that link to a, a form where you could submit a question ahead of time. So if you have any questions at all, let us know and we'll maybe even feature them in a future episode. And we, we explain more of that in the What is What Youth Open Shop Live video that we did. Uh-oh. Am I getting audio? Oh. Okay. So it looks like I'm getting audio. <laughs> yep. Okay. Sorry. I could hear my own voice. All right. Just had to confirm. Ooh, I have nightmares where I just wake up in a cold sweat wondering if I have audio. So <laughs> that's what we're, but today we're going to be answering a couple important questions about safety gear. First one, first point I want to make that there's four things that you need to make sure that you are when you have, uh, when you, you have, when you, when you want to be protected on your bike first, oops, there we go. You need to be protected. You need to have the, your body covered in such a way that if you fall or if you get hit by another biker or the ground or a tree or worse, a car, that you are safe and that your body is, you're going to sustain as little damage as possible. Next up, make sure that you're seen. The easiest way to avoid getting hit is to, not, is to make sure that the person that might hit you can see you. So we'll go over a little bit more of that in a second and make sure that you're heard. Now, a lot of people, they'll see you, but they won't register it. And sometimes you need to make yourself heard. And we'll go over that in a second as well. And what, how you, what it means to be heard when you're on your bike. You can't just go around shouting at everyone. That's, so there's, little, there's tips and tricks to do that too. And finally, oops, I'm pressing the wrong button. Uh, you need to be prepared. So if you're prepared, that way your bike ride will go smoothly, well, as smoothly as it can, you know, prepare for anything. This stream is a testament to that. Sometimes you're as prepared as you can be, but things still go wrong. So, but you want to prepare for everything you can. So that way your bike ride goes safely, smoothly, and you can come back and be healthy and have another bike ride the next day. That's the goal. All right. So let's take an adventure now. Boom. All right. Now I'm tiny in the corner over here. But now we've got the three scenarios that we got. We've got the first scenario here. Oh, over here 
is you're in the park or you're in your neighborhood or you just want to ride your bike and you know it's just it's not a super big deal you know you're not going uh any doing anything crazy but safety is still important next scenario is a little more dangerous as you can see it's a snowy it's a slick day it's a little bit dark it's not terribly dark you know it's like it's bright out but it's slippery and there's cars going by and you need to ride to school you need to ride to the store you need to ride to work you need to go somewhere but it's kind of dangerous out there and finally my uh the one i just included for fun i'm sure there's hopefully there's i don't know there's a bunch of you that have experienced mountain biking like this now this is a pretty tame trail that i have chosen here but because they can get really gnarly and that is when you're mountain biking sometimes you need extra protection what uh, especially when you're downhill racing meaning you start at the top of a mountain and you need to go down the mountain as fast as you can and you do not want to a lot of people end up in the hospital if they're not careful so you have to be very careful when you do that and we'll go over a little bit of that so let's go over the three different types of protection you need basic pro basic protection <laughs> advanced protection and super protection so we'll be going over that today. All right, first off, I wanna go over the, the most basic of bike protection, the helmet. When you, whenever you ride your bike, you wanna ride, you wanna ride with a helmet on. Now, I was riding three blocks one day and I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go out there. Uh, my helmet's already on my bike. I'll put my helmet on. Well, guess what? I fell and I broke my elbow, but luckily I had my helmet on because the way I fell, it doesn't matter how fast you're going. If you fall over sideways and hit your head just the right way, I hit my head on a curb, but luckily I was wearing my helmet, so it just kind of bounced me around and I, I was dizzy for a bit there. But it's important that whenever you're riding your bike, you wear a helmet because it doesn't matter how fast you're going or how far you're going, you can still run, you can still run the risk of hitting your head. So. Here we've got some basic helmets here. We've got some, just the basic, put your helmet on, strap it on the bottom. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys a story real quick while I go get a helmet. My brother, it's actually very important that you wear a good helmet. And I'll go get an example of what a good helmet is. Bingo. My brother was wearing a helmet that had cracked on the top and the plastic was all, had all gone bad. So he covered it in duct tape. And the sad part was, is the duct tape actually made it worse. Because helmets, they're smooth and they're plastic on top. And what that does is it helps the cement, the cement and thing you land on slide across. It doesn't get stuck. So if, uh, if the part of the top is rougher, it'll actually get caught. And what happened is my brother hit his head and his head got stuck on, the duct tape got stuck on the ground, whipped him backwards and he hit his head again. So you have to be very careful that your helmet is good on the top. You don't cover it in duct tape or, I don't know, you can cover it in reflective tape. We'll get to that in a second. But before I get into that, I wanna go over some important facts about the helmet. Helmet, it's made out of very sturdy foam on the inside. The first helmets were actually made out of leather and then they were made out of just solid plastic. But nowadays, they, they use a really sturdy foam. I'm sorry, I'm a bit winded. I just had to run across the shop to get this helmet. But the important part is that you need to find a helmet that fits you. So when you put it on, sometimes helmets will have this little dial thing that when you twist it, it gets bigger and smaller but you want to find a helmet that when you put it on, it's on there snug. It's not too tight because if it's too tight, it'll just rest on top and you won't be able to put it on all the way. And when it's uh, too loose, it'll shake around and then that's not very protective. So you want it to be on there snug. Sometimes you can adjust it to make it tighter. Okay, now, now that you have your helmet on there snug on top, you want to buckle it up. Now it's important to notice you want to have 
the loop here, the little triangle bit here, around the ear. Okay, let's see. And then you want to buckle it up under your chin. You want to make sure that you can still open your mouth all the way, but not that it's so loose that you can actually... Hmm. This, this helmet was meant for someone who had a smaller head than I did. Okay, cool. So you want to make sure that you can still open your mouth all the way, but that it's not loose enough. Ooh, that's still a little bit loose because I can lift it up off of my head. Sorry, I keep bumping my microphone there. Okay, that's better. Now, you don't want it so tight that it's holding your mouth shut, but you don't want it so loose that you can lift it up off of your head. So that's an important fact about the helmets. Made of hard foam, and you want one that fits your head and that it can fit snugly on there. Now, this is going to help you quite a bit. It's going to be able to help you keep your head. It's going to prevent, uh, like you can still hit your head pretty hard and need to go to the hospital even if you're wearing a helmet. So just be careful when you're riding. Don't, don't, uh, go, uh, don't go out looking for trouble <laughs> is, what my, is what they say. So you want to make sure that you're riding in a safe space somewhere that, uh, if you are, if there are dangers, that you're aware of them. You don't just go in there blind. But uh, helmets are great because they protect you from, my, like, if you just fall and bonk your head like I did, I just ended up a little bit dizzy, and I didn't have a concussion. I didn't have any damage to my, to my, the most important part of my head, my nose, just kidding, my brain. And that way you can, uh, just kind of, I was able to get up, shake it off, and ride off. And just ride the couple more blocks home after getting a burger. Ooh, that was a that was a harsh burger. I fell and bonked my head on that one. But it also protects you because when you fall and hit your head, you don't want you can you can if you crack if you hit your head hard enough, you can cut it open. So it's important to have that kind of protection there. So that way your head uh, you don't get cuts on your head and stuff like that. All right, so next up we've got, uh, oh, and so a, a, a couple more things. We've got the couple helmets, this the normal helmets like these ones on these two guys here. So if you're just doing, doing the basic stuff, always wear a helmet. Advanced stuff, this helmet's gonna be pretty good. And then uh, we've got the super helmet. That's actually, <laughs> It doesn't work very well because the helmet I outlined was meant for human heads, not stick figure heads. So uh, it's, but it's a full face helmet and it's got the chin guard and it goes all the way over the head. And they'd use that so that way you, uh, it protects your neck from going too far one way or the other so you don't hurt your neck or your spine. It also protects your face and your chin because getting gravel out of your skin really sucks. So uh, that's there for that. And then, I don't know, they're just fun. They make you look cool. Uh, the other part of being protected is you want to wear sufficient gear on your body. Helmet, now your head is very important because that's where your no I mean, brain is. And the rest of you needs protection too. Now, the first thing, and I actually got point, this was pointed out today by Dustin, if you remember him from last week. We, he pointed out that it's also important to wear closed toed shoes. Because if you crash and you fall over, you don't want to get gravel all up on your foot. That kind of sucks. So having closed-toed shoes will protect you against the bike or something else getting your foot caught into it. Or uh, you crashing and having to... It'll protect your feet from gravel. Because once your feet get really just ground up by gravel, it's not fun. So wearing closed-toed shoes is important. But also, if you're going... So... The advanced stuff. It's also, uh, I didn't put this here because I couldn't find good looping video of it, but if you're riding at night or in the rain, or if you're riding somewhere that you haven't been for the first time, so like let's say you want to go on a long distance trip, or maybe you're just new to biking, like you're not that, you're not that experienced of a biker, you're going to want to go for the advanced protection. 
So uh, now, uh, other cool thing about helmets, if you need a helmet, uh, visit one of the collectives and see what you can do to get a helmet. And because um, there are lots of different opportunities where kids especially can get helmets. So we want to make sure that everyone makes it to adulthood without banging their head too hard. So if you need a helmet, let us know. Uh, I will also probably tomorrow, I'll probably, I'll update the link in the description to see if there's any uh, resources of where you can get a helmet because I know there's those are out there. Okay. But anyway, back to other protection for your body. Now, the advanced guy, he's wearing knee pads and he's wearing elbow pads. And those are great. When I went to, when I crashed and hit my head on my burger, guess what else I did? I landed and I landed on my elbow and I broke my elbow. And that really hurt. I was, uh, I couldn't ride my bike for weeks and I had to wear a sling because when I landed, I land, I, I caught myself with my arm and all my weight landed on my elbow on the cement. So after that, I don't think I have one with me. I started wearing elbow pads that you'd put on your arm and they'd have a elbow pad here and I could wear it underneath my shirt. So that way when I rode long distances from my house to my work, I could go and uh, make sure that if I fell over again, I wasn't going to re-break my elbow. So knee pads are good for that too. Uh, elbows are more fragile than knees generally, but knees, if you land and you get scuffed up, it really hurts. So I'm sure some of you guys watching have scratched your knees and when you crashed before, and it's not terribly fun. Even if you're wearing pants, you can still get cuts and bruises on your legs if you crash and fall. So uh, it's it. So if you need the extra protect protection, do it. Now the super protection, you'll know. Oh, they're also wearing gloves. Now, one of the least fun things is when you crash, you go to stop yourself and you just rake your hand through the gravel. And that hurts so bad. So gloves are a really cool thing to have if you're if you accidentally crash. And a lot of gloves will actually have pads in them, so that way the vibrations of the road on your front handle on your front wheel don't make your arms or hands tired. But mostly it's for when you crash, so that way you don't get gravel in your palm, because that's no fun. Oh, is that no fun? So that's uh that's the gist of that. So the super guy, he's got more gloves. He's actually I found some gloves that had uh little pat like pla thick plastic pads on the knuckles. So that way when you hit something, you weren't going to break your hand either. That's that sucks too. So, but one other thing is when you're racing downhill, a lot of times you'll wear chest armor. And it's just like thick foam pads, not as thick as or hard as a helmet but still sometimes really thick and made of hard plastic. So that way, if you fall and you hit a tree, you're, you're not going to have to go to the hospital because, you know, you banged yourself up so bad. So that's the super protection. You can look those up. Those are really cool. I just got some little illustrations of those. But a lot of times um, you can get elbow pads, knee pads. You can get shin guards. You can get... Uh, back guards those are really cool sometimes you'll see them they're just like super dinosaur spines on your back and they're just there to protect you so that way when you land on your back you don't hurt your back so all right but that's how you protect yourself you protect your head which is most important you should always protect your head but then if you need to you protect your other parts too your hands your elbows your knees especially your feet because you can't ride your bike very easily when your feet are hurting. Take that home with you. <laughs> I'm, I, I thought that would sound better than it did. Anyway, next up, you want to make sure that you are seen. Now, you'll notice here, now I'm behind the guy for some reason. I thought I fixed that. But you'll notice here that the guy is wearing a little reflector on his ankle and on his shoulder. And you can wear a reflective vest, but the point is that when you're riding, you want to make sure that cars and other bicyclists can see you because you don't want to get, you don't want to surprise them. So it's important to go through and, uh, 
Uh, even sometimes you can get headlights on your helmet. I have a light on the back of my helmet that flashes red, so that way cars can see me when they're going to pass me. And we'll go over next week how to ride in the road or on the sidewalk and how to be safe when you're riding your bike. Today I just wanted to go over protective equipment, but uh, make sure that you are seen. That means wearing reflectors, having reflectors on your bike, having lights on your bike, and which goes to the super. Sometimes uh, you can have lights for your bike and for your helmet that are brighter than the headlights on a car because a lot of these racers, they start really early in the morning and they race all day long. And so they need a really bright light because it's still dark early in the morning. Or sometimes people just like to ride at night. Sometimes you do that. Just make sure you know what you're getting into and that you can see everything around you and that people, cars, other bikers can see you. All right, next up, make sure you're heard. Now, I don't know if you can tell what that is up in the corner, but that's a little bike bell. You just ding, ding, ding. You just ring it with your thumb as you go. Um, there's also bike horns. No, that one's just, a lot of people are like, oh, that's kid stuff. I don't need a bike horn. You just honk it. I'm not a clown honking horns. Or the shot, the dog here, he, he, one of his favorite two toys is a bike horn. So sometimes he'll just be honking a horn in the corner and we'll say, oh, moose, you're so silly. But, uh, horns are really important. As a matter of fact, if we go over to the super. Uh, that's an air horn, and that's a bottle of air hooked up to tubes that go to a big horn. Well, not a big horn. It's about the about the size of my fist. But you press it, and it sounds like a car, like a really high-pitched car horn. Now, the reason for that is when you're on the road, people are in their cars. They can't really hear you. So if you have a bell or a horn, you can say, hey, I'm over here. Don't run me over. Or, uh, hey, I need to pass you. Excuse me. Or like if you're passing someone who's walking on the bike trail or something like that. So horns are very important so that way you can be heard. So I've had a lot of emergencies where a car is passing really close to me or wanting to turn and they don't see me. So I just hurry and honk my horn and then they see me and then no one gets hit. Everyone's happy. Well, it's a little startling when you get honked at, but still, it's important to make sure that you're heard when you're riding your bike. Okay. Finally, you need to be prepared. If you are going for a long trip, advanced guy, he's got a patch kit. So that way, if he needs to stop, he can get a patch kit and everything ready. He can fix his tire. He can, uh... yeah, usually it's your tires that you need to have ready. But a super guy over here, he's got a first aid kit and also a patch kit, I'm sure. But if you're going for a very long distance or over, and again, the super guy isn't just people who are going down mountains really fast. It's also for people who are going very long distances, like around, like bike packing is where you have a backpack on your bike and you carry it along and you camp along the side of the trail or whatever. And it's just lots of fun. But if you're going that far, you want to be prepared. So you take your supplies necessary if you need a first if you're going long distance always take first aid kit it's very important and and some way to contact people which leads us to the mo very a uh, very important part is everybody when they're riding their bike it's best to have bike buddies so if you're riding your bike make sure if you can have someone with you take them with you invite people to say hey i want to go biking you want to come with me and then Take them with you because if you're in trouble, having people with you is the fastest way to get help. <laughs> As it turns out, people with you can help you faster. But what they can also do is they can contact emergency services. They can go and uh, get help from somebody. They can help you lift your bike if you fall into a ditch, which I've totally done by myself. And you have to pick up your bike and carry it out of the ditch. And it's always easier when there's people there to help you. If you can't take people with you, always, even, uh, even if you're just going around the block, let somebody know before you leave. Say, hey, I'm going to go on my bike around the block, or hey, I'm going to go to the store, or hey, I'm going to go on a bike ride up north. Well, north is actually that way where I'm sitting. But 
the important part is you always let someone know where you're going, how long you think you're going to be, and uh, when you hope to be back. Wait, those last two were the same thing. Point is, always make sure that people know where you're going and where you are. Because that's the way you be safe. Because that way, if you don't show up, they'll be like, Ooh, oh no, he hasn't come back yet, or she hasn't come back yet. I better go out looking for her, or I better call the police or the rescue team, or something like that. So always make sure that you have, no matter if, if you're just the basic security, advanced security, or super security, always have bike buddies on the, on the ready. Bike buddies can mean someone with you, or it can mean someone who knows where you went. So that's it for today. All right, uh, let's go back to the, to the park in Sydney. Now, again, it's important to be protected, to be seen, to be heard, and to be prepared. Protected means protecting your head and your body. Uh, seen means that you have reflectors, you have lights, you have... If, if you're going out during the night wearing bright colors, having reflectors on moving parts of your body is best. So if you put reflectors on your ankle, you're a lot, it's a lot easier for people to see you. Blinking lights are very important too. And it's important to be heard when you're riding your bike. Have a bell or a horn because you're not always going to be yelling or be able to yell at the person. Because bells and horns are easier to be heard through the car windows and the car doors. So that's important to have that stuff. And finally, be prepared. Have the kit, have the patch kits, the first aid kits, anything you need with you. So that way you can uh, have a, like a phone. So that way you can contact people and say, hey, I'm in trouble. Can you come find me or come help me? Or like if you need to call the police or, the, uh, or an ambulance or anything like that, always have some way to contact people. And then being the best prepared thing is have bike buddies, meaning someone who goes with you or someone who knows where you're going and where you'll be. So, sorry, that's it for bike safety today, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm here at the Ogden Bicycle Collective. This has been Youth Open Shop Live. And if you guys want to join in, go to tiny.cc slash yos live. We're getting some really big things coming up. So if, like, if you want to help us get bikes ready for donation, we had a huge giveaway here in Ogden and other places are doing giveaways too. If you guys want to get involved helping us get bikes ready for donation, join in and uh, join into the live streams and we'll work out the way that you guys can get involved too. And then uh, we're even working on a way that you could earn a bike of your own. So by participating in the, in the streams by helping us get bikes ready for donation, you could get a bike of your own. So that's what we're working towards and we want to get you guys involved too, because that's our goal, to get you guys involved in biking. So for now, you guys go out there, ride your bike, be safe, and have a great day.